Hey guys, Bearded Beast of Duloc here. In this video I'm going to take a look at the differences between full body workouts and um, body part splits. It might be a longer video. I've been trying to keep my video, video shorter for you guys. This one might be a longer one, so hang in there. Now guys, the research on protein synthesis for naturals. We're going to be talking about naturals in this video. The research for protein synthesis in naturals shows that when you hit a muscle um, hard, after about 48 hours, the, the, the rate of protein synthesis returns back to normal. So here you are at your workout. You're, you're beating your body to snot and, and uh, beating your bones to dust. After about 48 hours, your protein synthesis level returns to normal. Um, this is, uh, there's some good research uh, backing this. It's not speculation. Um, I encourage you to Google protein synthesis, 48 hours, all that good stuff on the interwebs and search for yourself. There are some good articles on muscleandstrength.com, uh, namely my interview with Dr. Casey Butt. So check it out at muscleandstrength.com. But back to the point, guys, protein synthesis returns to normal after 48 hours. So what that means is if you work a body part three times a week in the context of a full body workout, by the time you hit your next workout 48 hours later, you're going to um, hammer that muscle again. You're going you're gonna to spike the protein synthesis level for another 48 hours, and you're going to... Um, increase your uh, your muscle gains for the week. So if you look at a full body workout, it's like spike protein th synthesis back down, spike protein synthesis back down, spike protein synthesis back down. So your average protein th synthesis level is higher on a full body workout because you keep raising it over the over the course of a week. Whereas on a split when you hit a uh, one body part, it's going to spike just like it would on a full body, but then when it gets back down to normal after 48 hours, um, it's going to be, uh, you know, flatlining. So you're going to miss out on those bonus spikes you could have got if you were training in a full body manner. So guys, that is the primary reason why naturals should consider using full body workouts. I mean, if you go into the gym and hit 15 sets, if you're on a split and you're hitting 15 sets for, say, your chest, you're better off, uh, you know, that's still, that's still only going to, you know, increase protein synthesis for 48 hours. You're better off splitting them up over the course of three days with a day of rest in between and hitting five sets apiece. Um, there is, uh, there, I would also add to this, um, I'm checking my notes here, guys, so, there's there's a, a diminishing return that comes, you know, with uh, with training, uh, you know, in a volume manner for naturals. You know, you can't just keep adding volume and adding volume and get getting more and more and more returns. You know, those first few sets, those first two or three sets are the big hitters, the big destroyers of the muscle. After that, you know, you're you're just kind of like uh, it's kind of like nailing a, a a nail into a board you hit it and it goes a little bit deeper you hit it it goes a little bit deeper you hit it it goes a little bit deeper at some point guys it's in the wood you know the best this this analogy i hope this makes sense a full body workout you only hit it until it's in the wood and then you pull back and stop on a volume training uh, a program it's like you hit it into the wood and until that nail is in there where you want it and then you get the sledgehammer and start destroying the board you just keep beating up your uh, muscles and joints beyond the point where it makes any reasonable amount of sense you're just adding insult to injury you're not creating more muscle growth you're just blasting a muscle um, and making it harder for it to recover, you're also blasting your joints and tendons and ligaments and that stuff. So there is a diminishing amount, there's a diminishing returns when it comes to volume. Therefore, um, that's another reason why full body workouts make sense. You don't go in and kill yourself with 15 sets a day, you do the 5 or the 3 or whatever. So I hope that point makes sense, guys. Um, the uh, the next uh, 
topic I want to cover regarding full body workouts and splits has to do with the steroid era and how the evolution of training has taken place. Um, you know, you'll hear a lot on forums, full body workouts, uh, you know, don't, they're a joke, they don't work, they don't matter, they're outdated, all that kind of stuff. Guys, nothing could be further from the truth. Back in the days, you know, the 50s and in early 60s and, and guys were doing full body workouts and building amazing physiques. Huge amounts of muscle density. Um, they were, you know, doing a lot of compound lifts and then throwing in, a, you know, their pet lifts afterwards. They were effective for a long, long time. They haven't become less effective because we've gotten smarter. That's a ridiculous notion, so set that, you know, set that, uh, set that notion aside. Um, a funny thing happened as lifters started to increase the amount of anabolic drugs they were using. First you see the increase of steroids, and then you see the onset of things like insulin and growth hormone use. So the chemical curve just got steeper and steeper, and guys started using more and more stuff. And as they started using more and more stuff, you see the uh, the transition from full body uh workouts to splits going in the opposite direction. They tended to train a body part um, less frequently. Here's a major reason why, and I want you to understand this. Um, things like insulin promote protein synthesis, okay? Let that resonate. Things like insulin promote protein synthesis, guys. Insulin isn't an, uh, isn't talked about a lot on forums because guys are just tossing around, you know, steroids, steroids, steroids. But insulin is a very anabolic substance and is used by the top pros, guys. Um, it promotes protein synthesis. That means, you know, when you're on a, a split as a, a natural and after that 48-hour mark when your protein synthesis levels are back to normal... Well, if you're on insulin, you can hit a body part on a full bo on a split workout, and it, your your protein synthesis levels are going to stay up throughout the week because you're uh, you're in, you're chemically enhanced. You're not going to pay that penalty after 48 hours of returning back to normal. That's a major reason why full or splits work for uh, guys on steroids and uh, and insulin because their protein synthesis levels stay elevated throughout the week. And they don't need to train, you know, three times a week to, to keep those protein synthesis levels elevated. So, guys, that's a huge point. I want you to remember that. Um, let me uh, pull up the rest of my outline here. Let's get on to uh, some practical topics in this discussion. Can you still build muscle on a split? Of course you can. Yes, you can still build muscle on a split. It might be suboptimal, but you're still going to gain. Um, you know, let's, let's talk about younger lifters here, like the 18, 19, 20-year-olds. We've all seen tons of these guys hit the gym, build a lot of muscle, and they did it on training splits. Yeah, you know, that's, uh, that's, that's not surprising, and that's not unusual, and it might sound counter to what I just told you, but... These guys are young, they have great recovery levels, their hormones are jacked up, they can pretty much eat all day long and not gain a lot of fat. So it looks like they're gaining at an optimal level, and they probably are gaining at a pretty close to optimal level, but it's still not, an, it's still not optimal, optimal, guys. If you gain 12 pounds of muscle a year, or 14 pounds of muscle a year, and your optimal level is 16, you're still going to look like you're a mass monster gaining that 12 to 14 pounds of muscle a year, even though it's not optimal because of the protein synthesis issue. So these guys look, these guys are building a lot of muscle, but are, is it optimal? No, it is not optimal. It just looks optimal because of the sheer numbers. They're gaining 20, 25 pounds of muscle mass. If they would maximize protein synthesis by training more frequently, then you would pro then then um, the majority of them would see an increase in gains. Um, you can't you know you can't uh, you can't ignore the whole protein synthesis issue. You know so um, I've said this before in another video. 
if you're training optimally and say gaining 16 pounds of muscle your first uh, year and eight your second year for about 24, um, a suboptimal guy might, you know, a teen, let's say he hits 14 his first year and seven his second year, that's only about a, you know, a four pound muscle difference, but he still gained 21 pounds of muscle. And to guys on the forums, when they see this guy, and see he gained 21 pounds of muscle in two years. They're like, man, this guy is training optimally. He knows what he's doing. That's a massive amount of muscle. And they're right, it is a massive amount of muscle. But it is not optimal, guys. He hasn't squeezed out that last 10, 15, 20% by maximizing his protein synthesis by training more frequently. So, guys, I hope that point made some sense. Now let's talk about motivation. If you are training on a split, should you jump to a full body workout? Not necessarily. If you are making gains on a split, um, moving to a full body workout might be more mentally challenging. It's like learning a new way of training. A lot of times when guys move from splits to full body workouts they try to approach full body workouts like splits and try to cram a ton ton of volume into each day it's a completely different beast training with a split you got to go with your big hitters and then uh, you know and uh, you don't get to hit your biceps with 22 sets a day and your chest with 42 sets a day so it can be demotivational in that sense to many lifters who make the change so therefore, it's not always wise to jump from a split to a full body workout unless you understand the parameters of how you should be training. And even then, even if you know it's optimal and you understand how you should be training and you set up a perfect workout, even then you might be using a full body workout and you might not like it as much as a split. And guys, if you're training and you do not like your workout as much, you're not going to see the same amount of results. <clears throat> so if this is you and you just hate full body workouts, it's okay to stick with a split. It might be 10, 15, 20% less than optimal, but another year or two in the gym is going to correct that because um, gains, you know, they all even out at the end. I mean, if you train for 7, 8, 9, 10 years, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 years, it really doesn't matter how you train. As long as you train consistently, it'll all even out in the end. So... I hope that point makes sense, guys. Um, one last point I want to talk about here is uh, specialization. You know, if you are doing a, a, a split, um, you know, it might seem like you're able to get more work in for each body part per week. I want you to think about one point. Let's say you're doing a split and you're working, you're in the gym an hour a day uh, for four days a week. That's four hours of training. If you're doing a full body workout and you're, let's say you're only in the gym three days a week, but you're in for that same four hours of a period of time, regardless of if you're doing a split or regardless of if you're doing a full body workout, you're still getting four hours of work uh, in on your body. Now, a split tends to encourage some fluffy, you know, less than optimal exercises because you're doing so many exercises per body part that you do the big hitters and then you're so beat after that you tend to do the you know some redundant exercises or a couple you know like pec deck and flies and uh, um, there's some redundancy built in so on a full body workout you're more likely to use a higher percentage of the big hitters whereas on a split workout Guys tend to fluff it up a bit and make it more of a buffet training style because they're forced to fit in extra exercises, and that's that's um, you know that's not always the the most optimal. That's not the most optimal way of training. Um, you know, plus we have discussed that there's only so many sets and there's some diminishing returns on set volume or training volume when you're beating up a muscle. So there's that factor as well. So, you know, if you look at them, these guys are both training the same amount of time in the gym. The, the split guy is, generally has a, his, his exercise selection and overall workout impact usually isn't as dense as the full body guys. Plus, a percentage of his sets are just redundant. They're like, 
they're like I said, they're like um, taking the board and once you have the nail in already, smashing it with a sledgehammer to try to get that nail in deeper. So for that reason, guys, that's another that's another reason why I believe full body workouts are more effective than splits. So guys, I just blabbered for 15 minutes on this topic. I'm sorry I went long, but I wanted it to be an in-depth coverage of the debate. Guys, if you have any questions or comments regarding this topic, please leave them below. If you have any um, video uh, suggestions, any topics you want me to cover, leave them below as well, and I will cover them. And guys, as always... Please subscribe to the Bearded Beast of Duloc, kids. The Bearded Beast of Duloc, who wants you to just step outside the split box and consider a full body workout, kids. Have a great day, guys.